Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. I started to miss having a daily driver, so uh, I think it's time to dig into this Porsche and make it ready for the MOT. What I want to do is to rip out the engine because I want to change the crankshaft seal on both ends, possibly also the oil pan seal. I would like to change the clutch, maybe not the clutch, but at least the throw out bearing because it's extremely noisy. Then I want to change the water pump and just go over everything and it it makes sense to take the engine out. I could also take the transaxle out to do this job, but because I need to do that crankshaft seal, it will just be so much easier to do it with the engine out. I'm also going to change the camp belt. That will also be a lot easier with the engine out. So that is what I'm going to do. And hopefully it's not going to be too hard because this is a rear wheel drive car. So the engine is like that. And I think that is going to make the engine removal a lot easier. So what I want to do to begin with is to remove the bonnet. That is always a little bit risky job to do alone, but uh, I hopefully will manage. There we go. That gives me a lot better access, especially to lift the engine out and up. I will just start taking stuff apart, emptying out the coolant system and uh, getting ready to pull the engine pretty much. So let's get started with that. My car is missing the correct coolant hose up here because there's supposed to be a bleed screw right there. I'm trying to get the correct one before I reassemble it, otherwise it will be a little bit of a struggle to bleed it. But of course it's possible because it was split right now, so yeah. There we go. So the Porsche 924 is maybe not a complicated car, but I just worked on the uh, AZU van yesterday, and this is just, just this area right here contains more wires and more mechanical stuff than the entire AZU. But I am ready now to remove the, in the injection system and air filter and all that, I think. It's just a connector right there I need to unplug. Oh, that gives me quite a lot of room to work on, that's nice. I am getting really close now to lifting this engine out, I hope. I think that everything that I need to detach is detached. All I need to do is to loosen up the engine mount when I got it on the crane. It hasn't been that hard in the, so far, at least. There is a couple of bell housing bolts down there that, is, that is pretty hard to, to reach, but uh, not too bad though. I just want to give a small shout out to another channel on YouTube called A Road Trip Away. It's a guy from Germany who uh, makes some amazing videos uh, quality-wise. The uh, cinematics are off the scale. He also works on cool cars. 
And one of them is a Porsche 924 that he converted into a Overlander, a camper 924. And it's a pretty awesome little thing. Just look at it and imagine sleeping in one of these. He did that. So if you like videos about Porsche 924s and nice visuals, I would highly suggest you to check that out. After watching his videos, I actually decided to buy the camera that I'm currently using because I just noticed how big of a difference quality actually makes. I'm not saying my, my videos are anything like those, but just having a camera that actually focus a little bit and, and has a decent resolution and all that, it matters. Anyway, I am getting ready now to lift it out. The engine is now suspended by the crane and I'm loosening up the engine mounts. And I almost always forget something when doing stuff like this. It's going to be exciting to see if that's the case today. But I think I got everything loose. It's very, very often it's a small wire or something like that that I forget and rip. I think I will have to lower it a bit because I need to get it down and out. So I have lifted up the car a little bit and decided to remove the engine mount over here completely to hopefully give me enough room to get it out. I am slightly worried that I have to remove the subframe crossbar with steering and all that, but I really hope that I can avoid that. Oh, the engine mount is not looking that bad. That's good. That's a good thing. Let's see if that gives me some wiggle room to lift it up a bit. It's the oil pan that is such a weird shape that it is a bit difficult to wrestle out of there. But I got both engine mounts out now. I think, I hope that will be enough to actually remove it. Unfortunately, I think this one is shut. And maybe not. So it was a bit of a struggle. I had to remove the steering rack and hang that down. And uh, the Haynes manual is on its way in the mail. It would probably have been wiser to wait until it was here so I can read how to remove the engine. Now I just did it along the way and it went, it went okay. But if I knew that I had to remove the steering rack, for instance, it would have been easier to do with the car on the lift without having it hanging from the, from the crane. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it's out. The clutch plate, the clutch plate is slightly damaged from the dragging, from the dragging uh, release bearing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and change it all. I think uh, maybe not. I have to take a look at that clutch before deciding. There's a damaged torque spring. I might just change it. I have bought a clutch, but I can return it if I don't have to use it. But I do need to change the throwout bearing, of course. And then I need to fix the oil leaks. Yeah, but that will be in the next video. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can support me on Patreon. At the moment, it's a big deal for me to get some support to make the future for Seaside Garage a little brighter. There's a link for that in the description. There's also a link for the YouTube channel I talked about. And stay tuned for the next video on the Porsche or maybe on the ACU. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.